I, 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 they, they, she was mentioning it. I was like, I didn't know lavender was that damn expensive. Like, I'm or that heavy. Holy crap! <laughs> right. <laughs> So, Must yeah. be really dense. That's the densest flower I've ever seen. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of dense. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode one one one. I think that's seven, Kent. Is that seven? I'm pretty sure that's seven. Welcome to episode seven of the Ritual Misery Podcast <laughs> for Thursday, the nineteenth of January, two thousand seventeen. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we've got Chris and Gates with us tonight. <laughs> hey, man, I, one, 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 I, dude, I, I make it a personal policy to not math in public. I, I especially am not going to do binary in public. That's <laughs> Look, I, I might have done the rough math before the show, but I'm not going to say that I didn't. didn't do it. I, <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Christy, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Thanks for inviting me on. This is so cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, we're good to have you. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. De- denigrating yourself down to the commoner level and uh, coming on our show. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this, is, uh, th- this is actually pretty exciting. We usually don't have musical guests with us. Now, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say you have to perform, but you know. <laughs> we're not going to say uh-huh. that. <laughs> we're just going just gonna to hint at it every couple minutes during the show. You know, you know <laughs> look around just, for a guitar. Yeah. Uh, well, I no, mean, we, 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 kept, we kept waiting for Brian Brushwood to pull something out of his hat, and he wouldn't wear a hat, so we thought that was pretty special. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and he had short sleeves, so, you know, nothing yeah, up his it sleeves. Was, it, was like, it was like the best magic trick ever. We, it, it was so good, we didn't even see the magic trick. That's how good it was his, an invisible magic trick. Yeah, that's how good. So he has visibility was. qualities and magical qualities. Hey, so he's a uh, who are we to doubt him, right? Who are we to doubt him? Um, <laughs> Christy Cates, uh, for our vi- our listeners, you might know her w- one from DiamondClub.tv, two from Monday Music News, and three from the Streamathon. She went on air and did an entire hour of streaming some music, playing it live and uh, live loud and 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 awesome. So we really appreciate that. That was really super fun. I didn't really have plans for New Year's except for just kind of stuff around the house. And yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I just went out to dinner afterwards and that was kind of like the big highlight was hanging out with everybody and playing music. And you guys, I have to hand it to you because that must have been kind of complex to put together and round up all the talent and did a great job. It was very fun. I appreciate that. That's yeah, it was it was an undertaking. Uh, I'm sure. (laughs) And that's why we're doing it again next year. Are you? You should do it next year. You should oh, do it every yeah. year. Yeah, that, this, it's, it's this really is cool. the uh, the second year, so we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep going with that. Um, yeah. Oh, did you do one last year? See, I wasn't around oh. last year for it. So. La- last year yeah, wasn't was wasn't quite the production. Yeah, it wasn't quite the. It was production. what? Oh, it wasn't okay. Did you do that that long of a show or not? Was it different? Uh, it was twenty four hours and twenty four minutes. Oh, that's long. Yeah, it, that's good. But it was just <laughs> me. <laughs> really seriously? I mean. By yourself? Or probably well, yeah, other, like other people, yeah, other people hours. jumped in. Other people jumped in. Kent helped me get through the last several hours of it. But, uh, but yeah, um, the, the whole gimmick last year was that I was on air the entire time for everybody to do okay. New Year's. And this year I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I can't do that again. No. It is that sounds mildly terrifying to me to do do that for that long. My hour was like kind of scary at first. So I mean that yeah, kudos to you because that's terrifying <laughs> um so kent uh what you been doing this week man uh dodging hail oh well i mean that's that's much better than the alternative <gasps> yeah oh my gosh so i'm in new mexico mm-hmm. we don't get winter weather like, as a rule and it was saturday my son and his friend wanted to go to the local skate rink which is basically the only place in town to do anything at all so we were driving down the highway it, when suddenly there's this just dark cloud appears in front of us. And suddenly I can't see anything on the road. And it sounded like a dump truck of rocks were being poured <laughs> on my car. This sounds like the, a really bad introduction to an adventure in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yes. Or wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there were no orcs involved. I don't <laughs> But your son did have his bow and arrow, so, you know, it's, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it wasn't fun. It probably lasted about 10 or 15 minutes of just nonstop. I thought my car would have been destroyed 
Did it dent your car at all? Because it does that sometimes. No? Yeah. I was lucky. That's good. It's just like the slightest little scratch in my paint. And that's that's about it. But it, by the sounds of it, like my son was sitting in the back seat shouting to me. And I, I could hear that he was shouting, but I had no idea what he was saying. It was that, so loud. That's was, like me at the dinner table. My hearing's gotten so bad. Um, <laughs> Christy, Lord. Christy, how was your week? Um, my week was interesting. I did my usual uh, day job stuff, which is I'm a writer editor for uh, a couple different magazines. Um, but I'm working on putting together a music stream. So I have been trying to learn loop pedal. I don't know if you guys know what that is or not. Um, uh, it's called a boss loop pedal. Um, I actually went out and bought the R1. And what it is, is it's a pedal that you attach to, you can put it to a guitar, a keyboard, or vocal. And you start playing something and then you step on the pedal and it will loop. So if you're like, da, 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 you hit it, it'll go da, 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 and it holds that loop for you. And then you can build on top of it. So you kind of build parts on top of it and you can sing over it and you can add different parts. So it's all, it's kind of like a little multi recording studio, but only for about 15 minutes. <laughs> you only get about 15 minutes of time out of it. So, um, I watched the Ed Sheeran rockumentary, which is called, uh, goalposts, I think goalposts, something for goalposts. And it shows him doing it and he does it in a massive way. He just layers layer upon layer of sound and backing vocals. He's got like 10, 12 things going on. So that was kind of, I bought one of those and I'm kind of starting to learn. It's going to take a while, but yeah, that was my kind of nerdy music thing that I bought and I'm going to start using that hopefully. So for live nice. performances, it's really fun. Nice. That's it's a, quite fun. That actually sounds pretty exciting. That's, that's, I don't know. As, but we've been talking a lot about music and about top uh, guitarists and car- top drummers and things like that lately, mm-hmm. just off the wall stuff. And, uh, that that sounds like something like you know that we would have brought up in that conversation. I, I wish we had uh, had some more interesting uh, conversations at work now because that sounds way better than listening to the same dude talk about the same guitarist over and over and over again. <laughs> it's, do you know who Ed Sheeran is? Do you guys listen to him at all? Uh, he's, he's an English singer songwriter. My my official introduction with, to him was the video with um, uh, shoots Cherry somebody Cherry I can't remember her first name. Uh, the dancer for the video where they were in the ballroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I can't remember which song that is, but I know you're, yeah, I know I remember the video vaguely. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my yeah. introduction to him, and and then after that, of course, I was like, oh wow, and I went through a tear. So yeah, I've, I've mm-hmm. definitely heard his stuff, and he's he's awesome. Yeah, he did. He played uh, Wembley Arena by himself, mm. which is just a frightening thing to think about because Wembley Arena is massive. I can't. I think it's like eighty thousand people or something. And he was just up there with the loop pedal that I just described to you guys. He had like three or four of those, like his own custom setup, two microphones, and he was going back and forth between the microphones, stepping on the loop pedal, making all his. He didn't need a backing band. He tried to put one together, I guess, before the show. They had a little documentary section, and he said, "Ah, oh, it's too much effort to go out there and train a bunch of musicians. I'm just going to do this myself." Wembley wow. Arena by myself. No big deal. Right? Wow. Yeah, that is <laughs> insane. We were talking in the pre-show about how daunting it is to do a podcast mm-hmm. time with an audience. I can't imagine doing an arena. He actually said the other interesting thing he pointed out was that he's played in front of maybe, you know, 500 people before. And you can kind of pinpoint the individual people in the crowd. So you're looking at people's faces. He said when it gets to Wembley, I think the phrase he used was a giant blob. He's like, you're performing to just a giant blob of sound and you tell them to all raise their phones and you just see lights go up and you tell them to wave and you just see like movement. And so he said it's less intimidating once you get over the fact of where you are, because what you're visually seeing from the stage is not doesn't look like anything. Mm. It just looks like movement. So I thought that was an interesting way to look at it. I, I did get some experience with that doing uh, doing uh, uh, improv you because you, by the time the lights are on, you go up there mm-hmm. and you're you're lucky to see the host. Mm-hmm. You, you definitely mm-hmm. can't see the crowd unless you actually put your hands up. And of course, you're never going <laughs> to do that during a skit. You might do it in between skits or when things are getting set up, um, especially if, if someone's talking and they're, they're kind of interrupting and you want to get an idea about who they are so you can kind of razz them during the next, next skit. You know, you might do it. But <laughs> other than that, you, you see the host and, and then it's just lights after that. You can't see anything. And it's I, kind of an asset, though. It's kind of like ignorance is bliss because yeah. you can't see them. So yeah. they're not there. You're like an ostrich. It's the ostrich of the stage. You can't see anything. And then the nights that <laughs> I didn't perform, I was the uh, the the producer on the side doing all the music and stuff like that. Everybody can see you and you can see everybody looking at you, waiting for you to hit the next track to start the next bit. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, it was so that's almost it, more scary. It was. It was more nerve wracking yeah. be, being the, the producer on the side than it was, you know, being on the stage. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I could see that. 
Um, <laughs> so a- as for me, I uh, speaking of being on the stage, Man in the High Castle season two came out a couple weeks ago, and my mm-hmm. wife and in- and sister in law finally started watching it, and we have been tearing through season two. And by tearing through, I mean we did three episodes one night and three episodes the next night, and we still have four left. But it's it's awesome, and I didn't rewatch season one with them, and now I kind of wish I had because I'm I'm missing a few little details here and there, and it takes me another couple episodes to catch up to what they've recently watched, and it's just awesome though, it's great. I haven't started season two yet. I just actually watched uh, my boyfriend and I watched the end of season one, like the last two episodes. Mm. So I'm like kind of waiting to start season two, but man, that's it's such a good show. It's just so well done, amazing. Can't, and I, mean, I guess really close to the, I think really close to the, the book, but the book kind of ends with season one and then I guess they're going somewhere else with season two. So I, uh, so they, my, my, my wife and, uh, and sister-in-law didn't know that it was based on a book. So when oh, I really? it was based on the book, they're like, oh my gosh, oh, wow. is, is there, is there more than to the book? Like, cause my sister-in-law is like a reader, you know? And I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's written in 62. I don't think that there's going to be any continuation to it. And they're like, that explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but there's tons of Philip K. Dick books, so just tell them to go read a bunch yeah. of those. There's just but, stacks of those. Because they were wondering why there was only, like, there's a total of, like, three black actors in, in the first season. And, like, yeah, because it, it was written in the 60s. Yeah. yeah. By a white dude. By a white yeah, dude. Yeah, like, the time it's, frame. It's, so, it's, yeah. Not even, it's not even a racist thing. It's just a, a point of reference. Era. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kent, where are you at on the, on the Man in the High Castle? On Amazon yeah, I have streaming. Yet, I have yet to start it. See, w- one of the things that I've found is whenever you watch a show with someone, it's a double-edged sword because it enhances the experience when you had that person to watch it with you, but then you can't move to the next episode until that person is with you and also in the mood to watch it. You should be in this house, man. We just tunnel through. You'll catch up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> might have, yeah, I might have to switch to that strategy. You, you'll you'll catch so up. There's so behind on just because of that. Yeah, you, yeah, you'll catch up or die on the vine. It's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the, that's the too bad for you method of watching the show? <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't hold up for anybody. It's uh, oh, and a, a new episode, of, a new episode of Game of Thrones is out. I'm watching it live. Oh, you can't see it until Sunday next week. Too bad. Too bad for you. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, guess guess what next week's gonna be a double feature and I'm gonna watch it again anyway so I'll be still be there. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm kind of in a in a weird situation too because certain shows I watch with Lucas, certain shows I watch with Stephanie, certain shows I'll, I will watch by myself. So it's like, wait a minute, who am I supposed to watch this one? Oh, okay. Oh no, this one's just for me. Yay! <laughs> Keeping track. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Um. Hey, so this week, I, I got to say, was kind of a geeky week for me. I, I got a, a virtual private server. I set up Quasal Core on the server, played with Linux, and got that get, got that run and everything else. Pestered Kent about 10 times about using, using the, <laughs> my core so he can stay live in chat realm. And it's actually working. It's amazing. I love it. I had it set up before with, uh, with Tindek before um, he started doing other things and man, now that I have my own and it's always on again, I feel so connected with chat realm and I know that's, that's kind of me fanboying out with chat realm, but whatever it's, it's <laughs> awesome. And I'm so glad to be back into it. Very nice. cool. Yeah. Chat realm is one of those things. Like I'm, I'm in there as much as I can be, which turns out to be like, not as, not nearly as much as I want to be. Uh, and Quasal, it's, it is really a cool thing because you can, I can jump on like now and I can see what happened this afternoon. And I'd like to know what that is. I don't actually know what you guys are talking about. So what is that? Uh, it is a, I don't think it's open source, but it's free. Um, it's, it, it's a chat, it's a chat client, an IRC client client. Oh, okay. But you can set it up. They have a core version. That's basically a server that will keep track of what's going on while you're not logged on. Then you log into the core oh, cool. and not onto the site. And then okay. it gives you to where you can you can review all the things that have happened, and it allows us to be offline. Like right now, I'm not actually in the chat room. I'm mm-hmm. on the, I'm on the Ritual Misery account, but you can send me a message, and when next time I check it on my phone or my computer, or whatever else, it'll pop up. So, oh, that's it, very it, cool. It, it turns IRC into into a instant messaging pl- platform as opposed to just oh, a chat cool. client. Oh, cool. Okay. Basically, and it's more like kind of archived too. Almost it sounds like. Yeah, and it's, and it's great. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, cool. in, in fact, one time Kent missed out on, on some chat realm, uh, some fun chat realm stuff, and I went through the the core and downloaded or you know copied it and sent it to him in a text file so he could, he could watch the show and see the see it going oh, on at the cool. same time. Nice. So, 
No, I this week I geeked out about beer, which is not <laughs> unusual for me. Not a surprise. <laughs> but so, l- listeners of the show know that I have a re- right. Yeah, I also have a tongue that gets twisted around and <laughs> can't talk. Uh, but I have a rate beer account where I write beer reviews. The problem with rate beer and and talking about you know hey go check out my account. It's not social. I can't see like who's looking at it, who, you know, people can't send me messages, things like that. Well, you can, but it's very, it's very clunky. It's not a user friendly platform for social interaction. So what I did was I down, I finally, finally downloaded the untapped app, which is basically Twitter for beer lovers. And I tell you what, dude, I should have done this a long, long, long time ago. If anybody is using Untapped, other than the people that I've already added on there, get yeah. If you're if you're using it, get on there and find Del Noche. Add me so that we can be beer buddies on there. This thing is absolutely cool as heck. I'm gonna be every time I rate a beer, I'm going to also put it on Untapped so that people can you know like real time read my reviews. So this is going full circle now because originally I was introduced to untapped and then you were telling me about rate beer and you were like, I've already got a bunch of ratings on there. So I abandoned untapped and just started following (laughs) you on rate beer. And now you're going back to untapped. I'm like, son of a bitch. Well, (laughs) Hey, don't, don't despair though, because I'm still going to be using rate beer because rate beer is kind of like this massive archive that keeps the, the most amazing statistics and maps of where I've been and all of this kind of stuff. So I'm going to continue putting my, my full reviews on there where untapped is just going to be like, you know, two or three sentences, maybe at most, because it has to fit. It's just like Twitter. It has to fit within 140 characters. So it's going to be a very condensed, like, hey, it had hops, and I liked it. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Something like that. Um, Christy, are you much of a beer drinker? I know you're drinking tea right now. No, not at all, actually, but that sounds like fun if you're doing that. It's kind of like you can keep track of. It's kind of like a little mini Yelp for for beer, I guess, sort of. Yeah, Yeah, that's neat. And they kind of gamified it, too, because you can earn badges for, you know, if you have, say, five beers from five different countries or something like that, you get a badge. Oh, cool. So it's kind of neat. <laughs> I don't know. Everything's gamified these days. <laughs> um, you know, we were we were talking about uh, TV shows earlier, and we skipped right over the fact that Christy has caught up on some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <gasps> Love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, yes. I just watched the newest one last night. And boy, I mean, people are kind of... It's so weird how this show doesn't get enough love, I don't think. I really don't. It's People are very, very super critical of it, and I think it's so well done. I think it's actually better than a lot of other similar genre TV shows out there. So They're on, what, is it season three now or four? Five, oh, boy, that's a good <laughs> question. I feel like it's three. <laughs> the tough questions come out halfway through the show. That's what happens. <laughs> I, I don't remember. I can, you, I can tell you my perspective on, on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because I watch all of the Marvel TV shows yeah. up on all the movies and everything. And with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I... I, w- I tried to watch the first season. I only, tried. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I only got about halfway through it because it it started to feel like a chore to watch it. Why is that? And I I don't know if it was the like the villain of the week thing that it had going on. Like a lot of show like Smallville was notorious for that. Uh, but a lot of the like superhero shows tend to have like a you know a villain of the week, and it just started to feel redundant. Hmm. Um, and I, I think it was like late in season one where like there, there became a common thread, like a, an overarching plot line that they were, they were following. It was, you know, the whole thing with, um, the Inhumans or is that what you're talking about? No, it was before that. It was the, oh, before that. What, what's the, the leader, the, the agent, um, he died in the Avengers movie. Coulson? Coulson. Coulson. Oh, Coulson? The whole thing about what happened to him when he supposedly died was starting to surface. Um, so I'm going to have to go back and watch it because I heard that it gets way better. after. It season. is way better. Yeah, I agree. And plus, I mean, I the Inhumans thing, I think getting to that storyline took a little bit longer than maybe it should have. And I'm a fan, so I mean, I'm not that hypercritical of it, but I do. I can see where people would think it took longer to get to it. Now that they're kind of into that, where the Inhumans are already involved, you know, as part of S.H.I.E.L.D. and 
there's that whole thing going on and there's Mace who's like the new kind of like leader figurehead person and I, I just think it's a lot more interesting than it than it was even last season and I enjoyed last season it doesn't season four by the way I just checked so okay. the, the yeah. one thing that I'm curious about is how did they how was the implementation of Ghost Rider because I, I used to read faithfully read Ghost Rider comics when I was in high school so I'm a, a big Ghost Rider fan Nick Cage eh uh, I'm split on his performance as Ghost yeah. Rider. How did Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Fail? See, now, here's the thing that's interesting about that. I came to the Ghost Rider story not being familiar with it. So after I watched part of it, I went and read, you know, like, backstory and read what other people were saying about it. And it was it was pretty, I don't know, I'd say it was kind of like 60-40 on people liking it. So it was 60 more towards people liking the portrayal of it that they did. Okay. The, you know, I mean, the... The animation, you know, when his head turns into flames and all that kind of thing, like they did that very well. I thought it looked, it didn't look terribly cheesy as I was kind of concerned it might. And I think the portrayal of Ghost Rider and his relationship with his brother was really cool. It was really well done. I mean, it, it seemed very realistic to me and it was well acted. And yeah, I thought that was a really good arc of story to that, to the whole thing. So if you like Ghost Rider, you might actually enjoy that, that part yep. of the show. I need to get caught up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I it's really good. have this Ghost Rider craving. I gotta get caught up. <laughs> I uh, I was supposed to tackle my Marvel, the, well, the MCU, you know, the whole thing over Christmas break, and I didn't. Ah, I just didn't. Just didn't. One of those things, Amos. It's 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 got to be daunting for you because there is so much material. It's it's getting along the lines of the Doctor Who thing, which I'm never gonna bother with. Yeah, well, you did just Doctor Strange. So you kind yeah. of you kind of broke your own rule. Well, it wasn't a matter of that. It was a matter of Doctor Strange in and of itself was so interesting. And it wasn't until like the post credits that you saw that it was wrapped up into other things. Like at least, oh, at see, least from my well, from my eyes, not knowing as much as I don't know, th it was a standalone movie until the very end. So it didn't sure. matter. The story yeah. was awesome anyway. You having not seen any of the prior stuff, you missed all of the things that were there. For the people leading that, up right yeah. right and yeah. um and the fact that i was not going to miss seeing that in 3d after hearing the re reviews about it on court killers just wasn't going to do it <laughs> so. yeah especially from from patrick beja oh yeah i think that's nice oh, though yeah. about the marvel stuff is you can always i mean there's such a long list now you could just kind of like have a marathon some weekend and just watch them all at once you know because there's tons of them and you can just line them up and <laughs> kind of plow through them which would actually be really fun yeah yeah so yeah yeah um it's uh, it, we're gonna we're gonna breeze breeze through this real quickly. Um, Christy, are you a TED Talk watcher listener? You know, I've watched some of them. I don't I don't regularly watch them, but yeah, I've watched some of them, so I know the format and I know what you're talking about. Well, so me, me and yeah. Kent both happened to watch one this week. Cool. And that's the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> George Tulevsky, the next step in nanotechnology. Y you you got me more with the next step than you did with the name. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and saying the name of my TED talk. Uh, yeah. So nanotechnology. This is a really cool, cool uh, area in science. Nano, of course, meaning super tiny, small. There are these things called carbon nanotubes, which are basically right. just carbon atoms kind of rolled up into it, it, arranged in a specific manner yes right and, and the size of just a molecule basically and there are scientists that are using these things to create things uh, people that are trying to make nano computing a thing uh, there's even he even talked about a scientist that was trying to make like an elevator to space using nanotechnology Super awesome. crazy, like way sci-fi type stuff. The problem with this is because it's so small, it is incredibly difficult to manipulate these things. We don't have tools. Like we can't just hold a tool and manipulate these things. Uh, he made he made the analogy of working with nanotechnology is like a sculptor taking sand and trying to like glue sa like pieces of sand together to make a statue out of it. Uh, real difficult. So he said that the next step really is to figure out how to use chemistry like Mother Nature does. Use chemistry to basically teach the nano uh, 
well, nanoparticles, whatever it is, typically, in, in his case anyway, carbon nanotubes, uh, use chemistry to teach it how to make something and then just let it make itself into the thing. I'm just going to say that we're, we've, been, we've got such a great track record on teaching nature to do things for us. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, man. It didn't I didn't mean, scare if, me if at all. Gonna, if we're going to, yeah, I, I mean, this is kind of where I, where my thinking was. If we're going to teach, you know, nano particles, you know, how to make themselves into something or how to do a certain thing, and we start using it for biotech and, and things like that, like, is it always going to do what we told it to do? Or will one day, you know, a protein interact with the right chemical or something like that, and then now all of a sudden it, it's alive and wants to do its own thing. Mm. Well, I know they've already used nanotechnology in some things. I mean, they've put silver into bandages. I know that. That's one of them, right? And then you can get sporting, sport wear, I believe, like socks or gloves or something that are cooling. That was made with nanotechnology. This almost sounds like what you're talking about is like a combination of nanotechnology and stem cell technology. It almost sounds like a fusion of the two things, the way you phrased it. Is that what you mean? Uh, well, see, I wasn't talking about stem technology right but it sounds like you're saying like trying to get them to adapt to yeah. recreating themselves is almost like a stem cell type of thing kind of yeah I, he didn't get into like the re, you know reproducing or recreating it mm -hmm. um, but he was just saying that the uh, you know using chemistry uh you know in, in various different you know this was only like a, a 10 or 12 minute ted talk so he didn't delve super deep into it uh but yeah i mean i would say that that's that's right in long with the type of things that he was talking about. I don't know. It's just really fascinating because we've, we've learned a lot about nanotechnology, but we haven't actually produced much with it. Or applied it to anything really. Yeah. Exactly. Not a lot of things. So it, that's it, right. It, know, it's going to be interesting to see where, where we go with it in the future, because that, that's, that is the next step, I think. That's cool. Um, so I really, I, I don't have anything to add to that, except if you're interested in science, I watched, I saw a thing today about, uh, V'ger one and V'ger two. Um, if, if you don't know what those are, then you probably shouldn't watch this podcast and, uh, you should go check on them, check on them. They're doing amazing things. It's, it's completely fascinating what's going on with V'ger one and V'ger two. <laughs> and that that's 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 probably my first Star Trek bit, uh, reference ever. Yes, that's on the what I was going to say. Ever. I was like, this is way out of character. Ever. He was making a Star Trek reference. <laughs> 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 um, Angelica Das, the beauty of human skin in every color. And this was a she made an art project where she took an average color of people's faces, applied the same color in the background and made a big art project with it. Doesn't sound that exciting. It's completely beautiful. And one thing that really got me about this talk was that she, when she's describing her family and all the different flavors of family that she has, she's literally describing them without using anything that we typically use to describe people's skin color. She's not using black and white and anything else. She's using like flavors of ice cream and colors of trees. And it's, huh. it's amazing. The first five minutes of this TED Talk, are they, it blew my freaking mind. It was great. And really what it comes down to is she, she starts off with saying how sla the last country abolished slavery 136 years ago, and it's been 62 years since Martin Luther King gave his I, I Have a Dream speech. Something along those lines. I might have screwed up the numbers. But if you've seen the top of the show, you know screwing up numbers is my thing. Now... <laughs> It's it's just great, and I'm gonna go ahead and share this real quick with the with the video folks. If you're watching this on video, you get to see it. If not, you'll see the link in the sh in the show notes. This is one of the art projects. This is the uh, uh, human eye, H U M A N A or I E A or however that funky spelling is. This is what she's doing with everything, and it's great. It is beautiful and it's amazing and. Um, so those are all faces. Is that those, what that is? Those are those are all faces with the That's average neat. color of their skin being pasted okay. as their background, and then of course their portrait in front of it. Oh, and, very and, cool. and it's beautiful. It's great. Uh, and uh, I I just I, I'm not saying this is going to be one of those things that's going to change the world, but it was an interesting thought process going through this this video, which is what TED Talks are kind of about: is just bringing the thoughts to your mind. And here in our family, we're a blended family. We don't talk about black and white. We talk about 
peach and cocoa and like my wife's been doing that for years just kind of throwing out other words so it's not a black and white thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this really just took it to the next level and I, I thought it was awesome that's an innovative way to look at that i like that it's very cool yeah that's you know uh, <laughs> race is those things that that is always kind of weird to me because when we start talking about you know a black guy or a white guy or whatever you automatically conjure in your head what that means mm -hmm. you know and each person has their own thing uh that comes in their head their own prejudices their own uh just you know experiences and when you take away that default word that white guy that black guy and you replace it with a an actual descriptive word instead of that base word it take it takes away all of that that initial like prejudice reaction and this is and why I, I love you Ken. You, you you can say what i mean so much better than i can say it <laughs> <laughs> that's just really it's just social conditioning anyway really if you think about it it's just you know that's all it is yep. yeah and, yep. and again I've to that ted talk that sounds absolutely and, and, awesome. and again, I think it's I think it's a valuable thing to think of the difference between prejudice and stereotype. Uh, they're 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 specifically different. Both of them yeah, can be bad. Late, but yeah, both of them can be bad. Both of them can be can be healthy, especially in certain situations. But but either way, you have to know the difference in the meanings of each word and the meaning between each word. And uh, yeah. It's it's just one of those things. Like this, this is a constant topic on this show, just like talking about LGBTQ, STR, whatever the rest of the letters are now. They keep adding, they keep adding letters, but it's the same thing. Like stop hating people just because they have a certain quality that you don't like. Just get, you know, just find out what yeah. they're about and get along with them. Yep, labels are. Yeah, I don't like labels. <laughs> Speaking of labels, Christy Cates. Yes. Musician. <laughs> Yes. Diamond Club TV streamer. Okay. Diamond Club personality. <laughs> okay. And pretty lady. <laughs> like. And what? And pretty lady. I had to had to throw that in there. Like. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how did you come about to? I mean, I, I I've seen some things. We, we we're gonna get into something a little bit later. Like like I said before in pre show, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> how did you come around to being part of Diamond Club? It's actually a pretty cool story. Um, I was pretty unaware of diamond club this is maybe two summers ago and my boyfriend said hey you should watch you remember tom Merritt from you know old twit tv days and tech you know tech news and stuff and i was like oh yeah he's always doing this new thing on this kind of a new network i said okay so i started watching some stuff and he said you should be on this cord killer show okay i'll watch that so i watched cord killers and i just thought well it's a good show. I like these guys. You know, I, Tom Merritt, I've always liked watching Tom Merritt. Brian Brushwood's entertaining. So I was like, I wonder if I could contribute something. So just kind of on a whim, I've been a music writer for a really long time. I've been a musician for way longer than that. And I thought I bet I can contribute something musically. Maybe they'd want a segment about something musical. So I basically kind of, you know how you cold call if you're looking for a job? It was kind of like that. I just kind of cold contacted them and said, hey, I'd like to see if I could contribute something. Um, they asked me to make a three minute video and send it in. So I actually made a video that was just a review of music documentaries available on Netflix and they aired it on their very next show, which was a shock to me and then invited me on as a guest and they've been super welcoming and super supportive. And ever since then, I've just tried to kind of grow into this. I'd never podcasted before. I'd been doing music performance a really long time on stages, but it's a very different thing to do it in front of a camera and, you know, the whole chat realm thing is a new experience for me. And everyone has been super welcoming, super awesome, very helpful to this complete newbie who knew nothing about the technical end of things. So, yeah. And then I started thinking, well, I wanted to kind of contribute to Diamond Club. It's a community. I want to be part of it. I'll do a, a music news show and see if that picks up and people seem to like it. So, yeah, that's my short story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you were talking about Tom Merritt because every time I hear your name, I hear mm -hmm. it said in Tom's voice. Because I've heard <laughs> your name more than anyone else put together. Oh, that's nice. I hope in a good. I hope in a good way, not in a bad way. Always. In a <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Um, so, <laughs> so that actually explains where I heard heard of you before we had actually started talking about the New Year stream and things like that. Because um, I, I knew that you were doing the Monday music news and things like and, mm -hmm. and going on with that, and I was like, that's awesome. But I knew your name from somewhere. Like you, you have a distinctive name, you know. 
And I knew it from somewhere, and that explains exactly where I knew it from, because cord killers. So, finally, yes. the mystery is solved in my mind. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the first podcast I was ever on, was an episode of Cord Killers with Brian and Tom as a guest. So, And just completely confused and <laughs> didn't know what to do, and tried to follow along and do a good job. So, they had me back. I couldn't have been that bad, I guess. Jackie, so. Jackie Hearn in Jackie. the chat room is saying that she's doing the secret court killers dance. I didn't know there was a secret court killers dance. Like, I feel so out of the loop right now. Oh, there is. You, you can't know it because you're on a different show. You're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, Yo, it's funny that we're talking oh, you about. You look hurt. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks so hurt. I'm so it's sorry. Funny, it's funny that we're talking about Jackie, too, because, Christy, the first interaction that I ever had with you. Mm-hmm. was when Jackie was interviewing me for her What's Cooking show. And you were in the chat room at the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was supporting her new show. That was awesome. Yeah. And, that and was, you were the guest. Yeah, that was the first interaction I had with you. And I was like, this chick seems really cool. I definitely got <laughs> to get her on, on Ritual Misery sometime. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's nice. It was such, yeah, her show was so cool. Like how she digs into what people are doing creatively and stuff. And yeah, I remember you, remember you being the guest on that show. That was the first one I watched. It's really cool. Oh, so, cool. I kind of met you guys before then. I just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that have no idea, and this is usually where I ask about the project that you're working on because I haven't had the time to or, or just the desire because some, some people just work on stuff I don't care about. <laughs> this, <clears throat> this is not the instance for that. Any future guests, they don't listen to the show anyway, so they're not going to know I said that. Um, for, for how, would, how would you describe Monday Music News? Because that's kind of your, your big Diamond Club thing right now. I know you have other stuff in the works. Um, how would you explain that to people that have never watched it? It is a music news capsule show. And what, it, what it's actually spawned from is I have had a, a magazine online for a while called Pixis Magazine, which is its text. Um, I've written for a lot of magazines, um, Electronic Musician and, and Remix and the Southampton Press and interviewing bands and interviewing musicians, um, like people like OK Go and Rufus Wainwright and uh, John C. Riley, the actor. So, I mean, a lot of people like that that are doing kind of bigger things. Um, I've been fortunate in that I get to talk to them and kind of pick their brain and find out what they're working on and what they're doing. Monday Music News is a kind of a spinoff of that, that I'm hoping to grow where those kind of interviews get filtered back into it. Right now, it's more of a short news program kind of encapsulating what's going on in music that week. So we talk about, you know, what concerts are happening, what festivals are coming out, music festivals, who's recording, who's in the studio, what albums are coming out, what singles are coming out, all that kind of fun music news stuff. And it's kind of a, um, it leans more towards the indie rock side of things. Um, so a lot of indie rock stuff, a little bit of top 40 stuff. And we kind of, you know, dip into other genres too, but just the bigger stories that are coming out there. So yeah, it's about a 20, 25 minute show. It airs once a week. It's got a bunch of different segments to it. And we have the chat room open afterwards for something called the lounge, which is where you can just hang out and talk about music stuff after. So yeah, it's been really super fun. Yeah. I'm going to have to catch that live one of these times. Cause I, I usually go into the, the archive and catch oh, the, cool. fact, the fact so yeah, I, I definitely I love the lounge. I want to just hang out in the lounge afterwards because you always oh, got thanks. you always got great people in there. Tom's in there a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many people, and it's I don't know. People are drawn to you, and I think it's it's well for one, it's your personality, and two, it's the subject matter and how you cover it is just so professional and engaging and thank you um, entertaining. Like it's just it it's really awesome. Any Thank of our you, listeners that's very nice. that seen uh, Monday Music News, you need to check it out. It's on Monday. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just want to I just want to ask, and this I don't I don't want you to take this the wrong way because it's going to come off a little weird, but that's me. <laughs> I I was wondering if you would be the patron superhero of the Ritual Misery podcast because, as Chat Room has said, Christy Cates. That's like a superhero name. That's a comic book name. That's, really? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I'll take um, that. Some of the Especially others, with Clark Kate. Kent, Peter Parker, <laughs> Christy Cates, Lois oh, Lane. Yeah. I mean, it's right in there with it. Like, So if, if you would do us that honor of just being the patron superhero of Ritual Misery, I mean, you know, you, yeah, don't, sure. you don't have to. I'm just I'm not trying to obligate you live on the air on Diamond Club TV or anything. You know, no, <laughs> nothing like that. But. You know, if you if you want to do it, the, the spot's open. Like we, I'm just no, wondering, no what superpower do I get though? That's the thing. Hmm. Maybe that's hmm. to be revealed later in the season. Ooh. I see. Oh, it's a it's a it's a cliffhanger. It's a secret wow. superpower. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's a great idea. I like that. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> 
that, that's, all, that's all chat room. That's that's all chat room. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh my gosh, I just looked over there. All right, chat room. <laughs> Oh, I, may be, I may be a jerk. I'm not a liar. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I just was I was paying attention to you guys, and I just kind of glanced over, and they are doing that. So, oh my gosh, Chat Realm, you're amazing. I love Chat Realm has been picking on me lately. I'm gonna just throw this in there real quick. Um, I got a an Echo Dot for Christmas, and forgot to turn it off during the Monday music news. And you can probably guess what ensued from there. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> just Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you, you, so. you see the red ring. It's uh, I've I've learned my lesson. Yeah, uh -huh. and I went unplugged right now. So, <laughs> uh, my question for chat room then, uh, and if if you if you're listening to this and you're not part of the conversation, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, cruise on by DiamondClub.tv. You can join the the chat room from right there and chat with us live. And I would like the chat room. If you, if Christy Cates is our patron superhero, what is her secret identity? What, what is, what is, what is her, her walking around as a civilian identity? Dun, dun, oh, so, dun. so Christy Cates is her, her hero name. Or, or, or vice versa. I mean, it could be, I mean, she could have a superhero name and Christy Cates is her, her <laughs> normal, you know, everyday name. Like, you know, what, what is it? <laughs> chat, chat room, get on it. Let's work on that. <laughs> Yeah, figure out her backstory, her superpower, all of that stuff. That would be awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> when are we filming this thing? Where do I? When, when do we start? That sounds great. <laughs> I like it. Maybe maybe that will be our our South by Southwest project, Amos. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I Speaking can... of which, we are going to be in Austin for South by Southwest mm -hmm. the what eighth through the fifteenth, I think. Ish. Is when we're in. Ish. And we will be doing a, a live event. We are currently soliciting ideas for venues and, like, um, let's just call them activities <laughs> to take <laughs> during during our live event. <laughs> We've already got a few ideas, but we would love to incorporate ideas from chat room. Um, so send them our way, ritualmiserypodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, that sounds like go. a blast. Is that the first time you guys have done that? Or have you done it before? We, we've never done a live show. We, we put on uh, last year's um, Diamond Club Hangout the night before South by So Wasted. We've never done a live show like in front of, yeah. sounds fun. In front of people. We thought about putting one together last year, but it was very last minute. And yeah, it just didn't happen. <laughs> and, and last, last year I was flying in from Korea, so it kind of put a little time constraint on everything. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Um, hey, Kent, we uh, we have something for Christy that we do uh, every week now. Um, what is it called? Yeah, so we got a new bit, a new-ish bit at this point called Hot Takes. And it is a little game that we put together. It only takes about a minute to play. I, I, uh -oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> every time, He's laughing already. This does not bode well for me. Every time you've ever said Hot Takes, you have a dramatic pause immediately following like i can every time you say it i can see the ellipses on the screen <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 now added to the title it is now hot takes hot takes dot dot dot, dot, dot. dot. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, oh i like that even better it's hot takes dun, 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 dun. Dun. <laughs> oh see now i'm gonna have to record a sounder for it <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm totally gonna do that and or it has to be an organ too like a like a church organ oh heck. Dun, dun, dun. there you go <laughs> yes it'll be a joint project chrissy you and i, you and I make <laughs> okay it cool i'm on uh, it so the way this works is i'm going to give you a subject so for example oh. i'll say rush hour traffic am i right and then you have 10 seconds to just say whatever you want to say about rush hour traffic you can rant about it you can just you know, just glow about it whatever you want to say you have 10 seconds and then when you hear this, you stop, and I give you the next subject. Okay. okay. There's five of them all together. So it only takes about a minute to play. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Are you ready? No one warned me about this. <laughs> uh, no, no. That's, that's, no, uh, yeah, no. That's, Sorry. It's kind of the stick of the, sh uh, the show at this. Too bad for you. We're back at that again. <laughs> all, right. all right. So here we go. Mm -hmm. They might be giants. Am I right? Don't, don't, don't let's start. This is worst part. I don't get around. I don't get around. Yeah. Put a little birdhouse in your soul. Yeah. 
I actually saw them in Central Park, and they were amazing. <laughs> there you go. Being ambidextrous, am I right? <sighs> I am only right-handed. I am very incompetent with the, the other one, and I tend to drop things if I pick things up with my left hand. So ambidextrous, not for me. No, thank you. Nope, 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 nope. She doesn't even have a <laughs> desire to be ambidextrous. She's like, nah, the ambidextrous shit. Nah, no, not gonna. Nah, that's not <laughs> that's happening. Don't no. keep that over there, you freak. <laughs> John C. Riley, am I right? John C. Riley. I actually interviewed John C. Riley. It is funny you bring him up. He is a really funny person, and he is just as funny when you talk to him in a you know non-professional setting because we kind of chatted on the phone before the interview, and he's just as funny. He's just full of quips and funny remarks and sarcasm, and he's great and a great actor, obviously. Ace Detect, am I right? Ace Detect, that would be my friend Tom Merritt. Tom Merritt is a very talented person. He helped me get started on Court Killers and on DiamondClub.tv. And yeah, great guy, talented fellow, very wise, also writes books, does all kinds of cool stuff. There you go. <laughs> the Ritual Misery Podcast, am I right? The Ritual Misery Podcast. Look at these two fine fellows in front of me that have been so friendly and so welcoming and so goofy, and I've had so much fun talking to them. So there you go. I'm going to just do this until we get the sound. Where's the sound? There's the sound. Okay, good. I made it. Phew. Oh, man. She, awesome. She was so good at hitting 10 seconds every time until she had to just keep blurbing on about <laughs> right the last one. <laughs> she. When she started singing on the first one, I was like, oh, please sing all of your answers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so now the uh, the surprise I had I had told you about, if it's still up, let me, oh, let me, let me find out here. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm going to share this with, uh, with, with the viewers, uh, live viewers. I'm going to, I want you to explain what, what you see here and hopefully you can see this. Oh boy. I'm guessing you're not seeing it. So let's, let's, let's do this action right here. There you go. Now you can see it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you guys remember, but Tom Merritt was doing a show called Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. Have you guys seen that show at all? Uh, the yeah. The podcast yeah. that he did? Yeah. I love it. Yes. Where he pretends he's never seen the Star Wars movies before, and he just describes them as if he doesn't know who any of the characters are. He doesn't know what any of their names are. doesn't know any of the planets, doesn't know the Star Wars universe, knows nothing. And he had named Boba Fett Rocket Guy. <laughs> so I was in a Five Below store, which is this East Coast store where they just, everything's five bucks or under. And they had Boba Fett puzzles. And I thought, oh, there's Tom Merritt's friend Rocket Guy. So <laughs> I, uh, took a photo of that and and twittered it to him and he was quite pleased to see that his friend rocket guy actually had his own official branded puzzle so there you go <laughs> so so for the audio listeners this is christy cates and her the, the the tweet is hey ace detect look what they have at the local five below store rocket guy puzzles with a picture Ding. of a th 1000 piece collector's pu puzzle of boba fett got it okay <laughs> Why is this important? See, so that, that's a very, very much had to be described. Otherwise, you would have no idea what was going on. So I see why you asked about that. <laughs> uh, this is from 11 December 2015. And this is, as far as my browser would go, the oldest tweet you have on Twitter. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Wow, you really dug, didn't you? <laughs> uh, you know. Hey, he and I he and I have our different methods of research. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Okay. I saw that she had like four thousand tweets and I was like, let me find the oldest one. But that took a while. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was daunting, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> it was it was it actually wasn't that bad. I was watching TED Talk at the time. So <laughs> um hey Kent, what else do we have? What else we got tonight? Uh I'm, I'm sure we got uh, a few more things that uh, have not been covered as of yet. Um yeah, we we do have uh you know what? Let's let's go into that. Let's go into our feedback. We actually oh. got an email. Now this is this is interesting. Week. This is very interesting because she's already come up a few times and she's going to come up again in our in our email in our feedback section. So, uh Kent, why don't you go ahead and and read this for us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, an eerily timed email, if I don't say so. In multiple myself. ways, okay. multiple ways. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and read it. This is from Anonymous Lurker. <laughs> which, which, by the way, 
uh, if 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 everybody if, if anytime you come in and you write to us, email us at ritualmiserypodcast at gmail dot com. Put a random anonymous name at the bottom of it. Like we won't even say your your actual name. It, it just put anonymous something, it's anonymous sloth. You know, you know those little things that you get when you're when you're using uh, Google Docs for multiple people that don't have a Google account, <laughs> and it comes up with like anonymous a parrot like or whatever hippopotamus <laughs> yeah hi hippopotamus uh it, it, keep doing that keep doing that love it absolutely love it uh just along along with the uh, five stars shitty reviews on itunes keep keep those going love it love it love it absolutely <laughs> all right so anonymous lurker writes dear ritually miserable guys Fair enough. i've been watching you guys for a few months now cool show how do you get such great guests also when is jackie hearn coming back on She's so funny. You should have her on with one of her puppets. Um, there you go. So much so to say about this. Okay, first of all, <laughs> uh, we, we let's, let's let's tackle it in order. All right. Okay. Ritually miserable guys. It, it sounds very sad. I, yeah. Like. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I mean. I understand the name is Ritual Misery. I understand we've been using Ritual Misery since we heard heard it in a Metallica song and decided we wanted to have our own high school band. Are we the ritual, ritually miserable guys, though? Yeah, well, see, it's our own fault, dude. <laughs> like, that's the name we went with. It's our own fault. Fair enough. Okay, 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 fine, fine, fair enough. I've been watching you guys for a few months now. Cool show. How do you get such great guests? And I think this is a very, very uh, uh, important question. First of all, we grovel. Step one, grovel. <laughs> yep, that's important. Never underestimate the power of just straight begging. It's, it's yeah, there. Or just, or just asking, please. It's a very asking politely. See, that's what yeah, that works well. I think or Absolutely. begging. Uh, okay, so we have different approaches <laughs> on how we get people. Well, you up. start with please, and then and then you you start the real groveling if they don't email you back. <laughs> <laughs> also, when is Jackie Hearn coming back on? Kent, I think you have a good answer for this one. Uh, yeah. Let's say one week from today. One <gasps> Hurrah! Hmm. Wow, that, that's awesome. actually uh, now. Is that a guesstimate? No, it is exactly one week from today. Jackie Hearn will be our guest next week. Um, so I'm wondering if I wonder if Jackie created a like a, a an additional email account and sent this herself. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I I hadn't even I thought think, of that. Like I'm, I think, she's in the chat room looking confused that she's even on. So you guys don't want to confirm. That. I, I'm I'm the conspiracy theorist here. So that's a pretty good one, Kent. I'm, I I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, th I think I know who Anonymous Lurker is, and I don't think it's Jackie. So. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, there nice. there might have been an email address associated with the email. I'm just saying. <laughs> should, uh, but you should have her on with one of her puppets. Yeah, I would say that's up to Jackie. If Jackie wants to bring one of her pup puppets on with her. I think that's wrong. Have you seen her, her Doc Brown puppet? It's quite impressive. I, I, I it think looks just like Doc Brown. I think they're wrong. I don't think she should come on with one of her puppets. No? You oh, should think no. she should bring all of them? All of her puppets! Like, oh. bring all the puppets! Like, why not? Like, she should just have all the puppets just lined up. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh man. So, uh, yeah, so speaking of Jackie Hearn, she started a Patreon. Finally. <laughs> We've been telling her for, I don't even know how long. Jackie, you need, you need a Patreon. Um, if somebody could throw that in the chat, I was going to have it in the show notes to announce to everybody, and I failed. Uh, but if somebody can throw the Patreon into the chat, we will read where I'm, it is. I'm, 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 but, I'm trying, but it's not working. I just did it. It's in there. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> patreon.com slash It's a, it's a good thing our guest bail is out on these episodes, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, for, the, for those few of you that don't know who Jackie Hearn is, she's awesome and amazing, and she makes puppets and many, many other things, uh, but her puppets are absolute works of art, uh, and she performs them uh, in such an entertaining way. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, go support her on there. If you don't have the the scratch to help her out that way, uh, find her on Twitter and retweet her her Patreon announcement. Uh, that just getting the word out will help her out quite a bit. Um, yeah. yeah, 
Awesome. 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 Good job, Jackie. Very talented, right. cool person. So yeah, definitely. And and this is one of the times, not to take away from Jackie Hearn being on next week, but th th this is one of those times when we actually have several really awesome guests lined up for the next several shows, like all the way through the end of February. We've got just rad people lined up. Um, yeah. Do we want to announce any of them or, or well, no, because what if they cancel? What if they, li <laughs> what if they listen to the show and cancel? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, they said my name. I'm not doing it now. <laughs> like, screw those guys. <laughs> no, but, yeah. We, we definitely have a, a, a pretty cool lineup, uh, set up for you guys. So I will say, uh, movie league, Mike might be one of them. <gasps> That'd I'm, be cool. I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited. He's great. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, uh, since he's in the, since he's in the chat right now, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Is he really? I didn't. Even yeah. See it. Oh, look at that. I, that's why I thought that's why you called his name. No, <laughs> I was just I was just really excited. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh man. So I, I've actually got a a couple of questions left for for Christy. Okay. Uh. A while back, we had somebody on our show that does voiceover work. Um, he he does um, like commercials and he does like industrial like training type stuff, mm -hmm. and just all sorts of voiceover work. And I discovered on the deep web that you also do voiceover work. I do. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about that. Like, how? Uh, first of all, if you don't mind me asking, how successful are you with that? Like, as far as like getting uh, getting work in that field, and I, I guess the variety of because I listen to your demos, and I, I think your voice is suited for like all of the like all of the things. I was just curious about the like the depth of work that you've actually done in that field because I, this is this is a field that I'm interested in. I want to quit my job and just do podcasting and mm -hmm. voice. So what he's saying is hack all the things, bring all the puppets, <laughs> and and voice all the all the uh, shows. Yes, yes. <laughs> sounds Definitely. good. Um, I actually that's an interesting thing that you brought that up. I, that is something that I would like to be a lot more successful at, and I am not yet. Um, and I think the reason for that is I. I've been working through an agency in New York city for a while and the stuff that they get, you know, what you end up doing if you work with an agency is you, you end up doing what they get in. So if they don't get in what I want to do, which is for me, I'd like to do animation voices, sci-fi films, um, you know, documentary stuff like nature documentaries and that kind of thing. Um, so more stuff like that, what they tend to get in that they actually need are commercials. So I've done tons of commercials. I've done like pizza hut and, you know, Asics shoes and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and it's fun. It's not that it's not fun. It's oh. just like my heart isn't quite in it. Is, you know, is, so is there, is there a commercial we could find online in, in, play? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, I'm sure we, there's we, some. We, yeah, you having a no one. Oh, now, now I'm on a search. Now I'm on oh, a now search. Oh, no, dig. Um, <laughs> but more so, uh, a couple of things I've done that were more interesting to me. If I can mention those instead By of the means. Pizza Hut commercials, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, your, it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> is um, uh, I did a sci-fi movie called Mariah. Um, it was a short film, and I was the voice of the starship in that film, and that was super fun because it was like an AI voice, kind of like Major Roddenberry in Star Trek, where you know, she's talking, but the AI voice almost had a relationship with the main character. Like they were friends. So they were talking to each other in a more conversational way. That was fun. And the second thing that I loved was, um, I'm sure you guys know about Battlestar Galactica. you probably watched some of that at some point. Huh? Okay. Yeah. There's, a, there's an online game called Battlestar Galactica beyond the red line. Okay. And in that game, I got to be the voice of Nova, the fighter pilot. And those are two of the most fun voice gigs I've had so far. And I'd love to do more of that kind of stuff. To me, that's better because it's more creative and it's more, you can be more expressive, you can put more color into it, you can do a lot more with it. And yeah, I'd rather do that kind of voiceover work than any other kind. So Very especially cool. animation, I'd love to get into that. I have not yet, but. Awesome. So it, yeah. anybody listening, if you are in that field, that's <laughs> Kate's. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, we might know a guy and we might be able to shoot an email. Oh, well, that'd be nice. What kind of stuff do you want to do, Kent? Do you want to do commercial stuff or more film stuff, or what were you looking at doing? I, I would love to do film stuff, like either. Uh, and I'm this is coming from a like a dream standpoint because I have zero experience with this. Yeah. But I would love to do exactly what you're talking about—the creative side, whether mm -hmm. it's like an animated film, or even just like uh, like reading an audio book and voice the different voices. You know, like a dramatic reading, I guess. Yeah. Say, 
Uh, well, you're, she's shaking his head. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I just think that would be absolutely awesome. And if I could get get work, not necessarily starting out in that because that's like my like where I would want to go. Mm-hmm. But if I could get experience in the field, even if it's a, a commercial or just reading, uh, you know, like training modules for for like corporate safety courses or something like that. Well, actually, like I didn't mean to be so harsh on commercials because commercials actually they can be tough because you have to do such a long, you know, like a, a broad range of people. One day you're just talking in your normal voice. You're just speaking like this. And the next day you're, you know, you get assigned a character and you're like, oh my God, I like can't believe I went to the mall and I found that person. It's like the stupidest person ever. You know, so you have to do these like character voices that, so that's challenging in a way. It's just, they're so short and you are selling a product. So it's a different experience, I think, than creating a character that's more, in, you're more invested in the character if you're in a film or you're in a video game. So it's kind of two different versions of the same talent or the same skill. I think that you're utilizing to do that. So Mo- movie league, Mo- movie league, Mike in the chat room, uh, wants to know where the a six animated shoe series is. <laughs> the what? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh my I have god! No idea. And, and if if you ever want to know my aspirations for voice acting, just listen all the way through. I know it. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. <laughs> listen through the entire episode of Ritual Misery on the podcast form, and you'll hear my voice acting skills as I pimp our Patreon. That's all I'm saying. Oh, nice! Uh, it's, it's it's awful. It takes 45 takes. I actually thought about making a video <laughs> about how I make how I produce the show and release it and everything else. And uh, and after like the 50th take of of trying to do my little voice at the end for the for the Patreon pimp, I was just I can't I can't do this. Like this is <laughs> nobody nobody wants to see me say this same line 15 different ways 50 times. So there you go. I'm I'm not I'm not cut out for it. No way. And that's the trick. I mean, that's you know talking back to what Kent was talking about, it's like you sometimes get handed a script and you're expected to execute that script in like under three takes. Otherwise they just get somebody else to do it. So it's kind of cutthroat that way, especially with the commercial (laughs) stuff. It's like, here you go. Okay. No. Okay. Next. It's like, really? Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So you wouldn't get 50 tries. So you don't have to worry about it because you wouldn't get 50 tries. See, see, I'm a sale rep. Right yeah. out of the gate, Amos. Self-eliminating yeah. right here. This guy right here. <laughs> so many things I'm self-eliminating. Hey, Kent, um, so there's one more thing, one more big thing we got to do, dude. And th- yeah. And, th- and that wasn't do-do. It was do-dude. I'm just... <laughs> do-do. <laughs> <laughs> you said do-dude. Oh, wait. Oh, that was too. That's past tense. <laughs> That's that. Oh, that, that yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Damn it, I'm guilty. I do do. All right, one <laughs> one one final question for Christy. What's your favorite number? Hmm? What's your favorite number? I don't really have one. Okay, what's the first number that comes to your mind? Twelve. Perfect. Okay. Fair enough. So. <laughs> Twelve is a good number. <sighs> I was the, trying to the, listen to the, the attributes. The attributes of twelve. I mean, you've got the you've got the the straight line with the little hooky thing on top and the little the, the, the little uh-huh. level in the bottom, and then the two's got like the the curve mm-hmm. to it with a little mm-hmm. bit of straight edge right there with a nice sharp point. So it's like soft mm-hmm. and hard at the same time. Like twelve's a good number. Like I, okay, I enjoy the attributes of twelve. It's so. mostly because he asked me for a number, and I kind of glanced that way, and there's an empty egg carton right there. It's a 12 on the end, so I said 12. So, you know, that's there you go. <laughs> so we do a little thing on our show where throughout the episode, we listen for phrases or words that, that catch our attention, that a lot of times it's something that the guest says, sometimes it's something that, that Amos or I will say, and we'll throw it into a doc that automatically places it into a story, Mad Lib style. Oh no! <laughs> so this week, Amos, what do we have? We haven't, <sighs> right? Well, we, we we asked Christy about how she got on Diamond Club, but we didn't really ask her about how she got into music because we already know. We already know. We we know that back in the day, back when it was just l- little mini Christy, um, <laughs> she was reading an interview, and that interview sparked her interest in music and in you know singing. Her, her her thoughts and putting them on paper and making the emotions alive with music. And we went out and we found the interview. We found the yeah. interview that inspired Christy Cates 
This is like the origin story kind of stuff for her superhero persona. We found the origin so- story. Uh, <laughs> this interview, um, and Kent, I believe you are going to be the interviewee and, or the interviewer, and I'm going to be the interviewee because we, we need to. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna play the part of Christy then. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, Cr- Cr- Christie's inspiration, you mean? Yes, yes. You're gonna you're you're gonna be the uh, the 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 ask her the questions, and I will be the answerer. Oh, okay, so this is this is Christie's inspiration, not yes, Christie. Yes. No. 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 That. that wait. Was, wait. 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 What wait. you are hearing here may not be true. Just <laughs> uh, I no. Th- this is this is like this is gospel. This this is what huh. happened right here. This is, uh-huh. We found this on the internet. Everything I've, on yes, the internet is yes. true. And I've, true. And, I've said, and I've already said on a podcast uh, live on Diamond Club TV that I am not a liar. That's I mean this is <laughs> it's fact. It's this, is, is, this, true. It's this is at least as valid as Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> Holy crap! All right, so here we go. Hmm. All right, <clears throat> first question: Whatever made you choose the name the Psycho Podcasters for your group? Well, you see all the other podcast names like Rolling Sounds and Chamomile Jam and Lavender <laughs> Floyd were taken. I see, I see. Okay. Well, you not only encapsulate songs, but you play many fun intru- instruments, don't you? Yeah. I play the electric church organ, the bass studio, and beyond keyboard. The beyond keyboard. That's, yeah. That's an interesting instrument. All right. Uh, all right. I just have one more question for you. You know, you know you have an indie song that is number 12 on the stupidest ever charts. What was the inspiration for this amazing song? Believe it or not, it was a live song that my mother used to sing to me when I was when it was time for puppet and and I just never failed to to air me to sleep. <laughs> All right, that th- Thank you very much. So, I mean, I, I, I personally don't understand why you would find such inspiration from this, but I mean, <laughs> we, we, you can't. We, no, I'm I mean, shocked. Would you, would you like to explain? Shocked. Would you like to explain exactly what about this interview really, really sank in with you? Was it the honesty? Was it the candor? Was it just the personalities involved? What was it about this interview that really told you music's the way you should go in life? I think it was the voice of the gentleman being interviewed. I mean, if he could just sing like he spoke, oh, we'd have hit records left and right, wouldn't uh, we now? See, it's too, it's, too, it's too bad he was a drummer. So, Kit, man, uh, <laughs> uh, where can we find Christy's stuff? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask her. I'm going to ask you. What's up? Oh, you're going to ask me? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, I, what I recommend is two things right off the bat. I recommend that people follow her immediately on Twitter at Christy Cates, and that's Christy with a K. It's K R I S T I K A T E S. It is. Christy Cates. The other thing that I would suggest right away is to go to her website, ChristyCates.com, and it's wait, got links wait. to all of her stuff. Wait, wait. Her Twitter and her website are both Christy Cates with two Ks. <laughs> yes. How can I confuse that? Why? What? What reason would I have not going to these to the Twitter and and to the to the website? What? Like, give me a reason, Christy. Why would somebody not know to go to christycates.com and Twitter <laughs> slash Christy Cates? Uh, because my name gets spelled incorrectly very often, so it's very nice of Ken to actually spell it out correctly. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. See, and she's she's just a woman <laughs> with answers. That's what she is. She, she knows it all. So, uh, out of the out of the many things that you it, have present on the web, other than the two that I just said, what is the one that you would call out in particular, whether it's linked on your site or not? Um, Most I would. Well, can I have two? Okay, cool. I get two. Um, it, so it, probably, it, 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 it's you your show. You it's, it. it's your show. Like I don't know why you're asking. Oh us. well, you it's know. Your show. I don't know. Why am I even asking anymore? Right. Um, <laughs> well, for Diamond Club, that's where my friends are hanging out, and that's where the music news show is. Um, YouTube kind of has a little bit of everything, but it has a lot of music on it. Um, I wanted to mention to you guys um, again. Thank you for including me in the New Year's show because it kind of kickstarted an idea I've had for a while, which is to do a streaming music live show podcast. Um, so I'm going to join the ranks of Twitch and simulcast on diamondclub.tv. And I am going to be doing a live music show. It's either going to start on January 27th or February 3rd, depending on how quickly I can get my gear together. Um, I'm hoping for every other Friday or every Friday. I haven't decided on that yet, but it'll be live performance, much like the New Year's Eve show. So it'll be piano, guitar, singing, 
me. So I hope people will tune in for that. And you can fi- find out about that on Twitter. Kent was exactly right. Please follow me there because that's where I pretty much post everything first. So it's a good place to keep an eye on me if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> The internet is a dark, dark place, Amos. <laughs> you don't Speaking have to tell places, me. I know, I know. It's uh, yeah. places on the internet. Where can they find you? Um, at, uh, let's see, I, I did Twitter. Uh, you is might, that, you might have like, guessed at Amos or something like that. Uh, no, 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 no. I no, no. At Ethan Anthony? Kane. At Ethan Kane. Yeah. Ethan Kane, because that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> why not? Why not? <laughs> How about you, Kent? Uh, yeah, I am at rm underscore del noche. Wait, 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 wait. Where's the where's the at Kent? Where, where's the at Kent? What's going on here? Yeah, yeah. I was about eight years late to Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's actually accurate. You gotta <laughs> snag those names early. Yeah. So, so at rm underscore del noche. Yep. And now also go to Untapped and find me. I'm del noche on there. Yep, yep. And uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. I mean, we finally got that one right, right? Actually, oh. actually, our friend Jeremy hooked us up with that. And uh, you can go to <laughs> RitualMisery.com for all the other stuff, everything else in the Ritual Misery universe. And if you just want to be ritually miserable with this, cruise on by there because I oh. haven't updated the site in a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certain pages are updating, but uh, yeah, the overall site. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what we should do, dude? We should. Uh, uh, oh. you, you just said dude, dude again. Like, did you? Like, <laughs> hey, I'm not going to say that that wasn't on purpose. It's uh, a catchphrase uh, now. Now he has to say it every show. Uh, dude, dude. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> the obligations of this show are immense. <laughs> hey, old school and put one of those one of those animated GIF banners that says uh, under construction. With like the backhoe working, yeah, the yellow yeah. and black stripes. Yeah, can, can yeah. we get, can we get that in Flash? Oh, oh wait, uh, no, too um, soon, too soon, yeah. too soon for Flash. No, <laughs> yeah. come on, or come on. We just make a vine. Uh, uh. Come on, who di- who didn't love Frog Blender or Superfly? <laughs> oh, that was what, uh, what was it? Joe Cartoon. Yeah, that made Joe Cartoon. It. Man. Oh. The best thing to ever happen to Flash and the worst thing to ever happen to my computer. Cause I <laughs> uh, so anyway, <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so check us out at all the places. Hey, uh, it's time to thank uh, our musical guest, uh, Christy Cates, and then also re- 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 uh, 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 that guy yeah, in, in CompTech. Uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod, thanks for the music. This has been your show. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and I finally got the new the new tagline, the new Diamond Club TV tagline. In my in my in my machine, my little button machine, aka iPad. It's finally in there. <laughs> I, I You've play, been talking about it for like a month. 